Jennifer, would you mind reading the land acknowledgement? Oh, it's okay. I got it. I you got it? Sense. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, we would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging that the town of Shelburne resides within the traditional territory and ancestral lands of the An 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 Anishinaabe, including the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Shipewa, and the people of the Three Fires Confederacy. These traditional ter territories upon which we live, work, play, and learn are steed in rich indigenous history and traditions. It is with this statement that we declare to honor and respect the past and present connection of indigenous peoples with this land, its waterways and resources. Is that it? That's... So the next item on the agenda is you need to let members know if they have a pecuniary interest, they'll be required to disclose it at any time throughout the meeting. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Item number two. Oh, item number two, um, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Members of the committee are required to state any pecuniary interest in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. And then item number three, we'll need a item mover. Go ahead, Jennifer. A mover and a seconder to adopt the agenda. Pardon me? So you'll need to call on um, a mover and a seconder to adopt the agenda. Okay, so I now call on a mover. A mover. A seconder. Yeah. And a seconder right, so, to adopt. Yeah. The so agenda. I, so Chuck Chuck uh, moved it. Yeah. Priyasha seconded. Okay. And then you call for the vote. Ask if all are in favor. Any opposed? Are all in favor? Any opposed? In favor. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Motion carries. Uh, item number four. Okay, be it resolved that the agenda of the Economic Development Committee meeting on September 15, 2023 be adopted as presented or amended. So that was item number three. We've just done, we did that one. Okay. So item number four, adoption of minutes. Okay. So be it resolved that the minutes from Economic Development Committee meeting held on July 21, 2023, meeting be adopted as presented. And you'll need a mover and a seconder. Do I do I have a mover and a seconder? I read the meeting minutes and it's all fine, so I can move it. Priya? Yeah. I can second it. It's Amy. Amy. And then you'll call for the vote if all are in favor. Uh, Okay, are all in favor? Okay, that motion carries. Motion carries. Okay. Item number five on the agenda, general information. Um, first one, a 2024 um, budget. So we're looking for a resolution from the committee in support of the proposed amounts for the items for the 2024 budget. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you so that you can see. It's uh, 
it really is only uh, four line items that you will be reviewing. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay, so it's the economic development breakfast. Um, we've set aside, uh, proposal is to set aside $4,000. Um, the, the reason for this particular amount is because uh, the last EDC breakfast was held um, just before, uh, hasn't been held since the pandemic, since, since 2019. So I'm sh we're pretty certain that the costs have probably escalated substantially uh, for food. So in order for us to, we're not, at this time, we're not really able to determine the exact cost of the breakfast. Normally what we do is we send out uh, requests for proposals um, and that's something that the committee can discuss at another time. Um, but um, because we're not entirely sure, even though this is a break even event, um, we have decided to put aside a little bit of money to hopefully cover any costs that are unforeseen. Uh, EDC Golf, that um, hasn't changed from previous years, it'll still be $800, and that can be used however the committee um, wants to use it with regards to whether they want to purchase swag or whether they would just like to um, have an add-on event at the golf tournament, that's entirely up to you. Um, and then for the, um, the speakers uh, in education, this also has to do with um, like if you decide that you want to do a, uh, a series uh, to educate local businesses and you might need to have a, a small fee for the speaker. Uh, and the e-commerce Shopify site, that probably uh, won't be continued this year. So that particular light item will probably be deleted. But in past, it has been $1,500. Okay. Do you, do you have any idea how much uh, was spent in 2019 for the um, economic development breakfast? Yeah. So the tickets for the EDC breakfast at that time were, I believe they were uh, $18 okay. per person. And we had approximately 220 people attend. Okay. So I can tell, oh, hi, Chuck. Did you have another question? I, I did. If if, we're, if the 1500 is going to be gone, it can be reallocated into the line item above or is it or and or is it then a discretionary uh, line amount for this committee to try to allocate or is it just going back into the general coffers? It was going to go back to the general coffers, but if this committee sees value in increasing um one of the other line items we can certainly move it there right and so and then i guess i and i haven't read that full 132 pages so i apologize if that was sent out <laughs> um does this committee not get to make recommendations on other budget line items you know such as research or um you know wayfinding and, and all that sort of stuff or is that that's this is a budget we control the rest of it's just recommendations yes okay that's fine thank you uh one question sorry my mouse is playing up um so when you, you said this is a break even event uh break even event so whatever the money we are going to get from the tickets will be used against the event plus this $4,000. Am I correct? Yes. Oh, and okay. So keeping in mind that there, is a, there isn't an amount, like for instance, the Orangeville Economic Development is holding their economic development breakfast and they're charging $25 per ticket. Uh, there is an amount that probably, like, you know, let's say the, the fees all come back and the, and the ticket prices will be something like $60 per person that probably, we wouldn't probably sell any tickets at that price no. point. So that's the reason that the $4,000 is there is to hopefully hopefully offset any right. cost overruns. Makes sense. Hi, Walter. Sorry, I have a question. Um, 
the fifteen hundred dollars that uh, we were going to put back into um, general coffers, can we utilize it for things like conferences? Not conferences, but um, yeah, conferences. I guess we can call it. Where, for example, the fran franchise conference or other conferences to attract businesses into the community, is it possible to put it into a fund of that nature? Yep. Yeah, it's entirely, it's the committee's choice, like where they would like to see it. But yeah, absolutely. And and that would be my thought is not to let it go back to general coffers, but to put it into a fund where it can be reutilized for attracting um, business in um, so that um, we can send, for example, you or somebody else to uh, these uh, conferences, pick up um both information, ideas. We have business, for example, storefronts downtown that are unoccupied and um, maybe we can occupy even though um, majority seems to be occupied these days. Um, just general franchises is one example. Industry, um, while at some point we hopefully can gain more industrial land, um, industry is another thing we need to maybe focus on uh, for the growth of the community. It's great to have residential, but we also need to have work for the community. Um, and uh, even if it's commercial or industry. So if that, I mean, that is one of the purposes of the Economic Development Committee is to put out the fact that Shelburne is open for business. So if we can utilize that 1500 in that format, I would rather see it go there than just disappear into general coffers yeah it can it can absolutely go towards those things do you need a proposal to keep it um at this point jennifer or do we um or carol or do we just uh leave it and change the, the line item name uh, there is a line item, I believe, that has existed in the past. I can certainly speak with Carrie about that, but um, I'm not sure, like it wouldn't be under the 7308 public, well, I suppose it could be under public relations, yeah. So I, I guess we could keep it where it is, but maybe change the, the title of the, but I'll get confirmation from Carrie. Hi, Jennifer. Just for a point of clarification, you will need to create an additional line item in the budget for that. And um, staff and council members have separate budgets for conference attendance. So this would be for committee members to attend Only. that are not staff and not council members. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that. But I, I believe there was a line item previously. So I'm wondering, I'm just going to have to talk to Carrie about um what that number is or what the line item number is. I know, sorry, if I can follow up. I know in the past we've sent the um, chair who wasn't a counselor or other members to some of these events. And so whether it's the vice chair or any of the other members wish to go to or see an event that they wish to go to, I'd still rather keep the money there. Anybody that can bring back information to both the committee and to council, I think is and staff is valuable. Yeah. Sorry, I found, I found a line item in the, in the economic development budget that says EDC committee expenses. And so we can allocate that 1500 to that line item. Okay. And I think, you know, I think it would be beneficial if it was the chair of the, like an actual member of council and or a staff member that went is it so you're saying that it was a staff member if if you guys are sitting as a staffer on this committee the, could it then become a committee cost to send you or would it would it have to be a staff cost and if it had to be a staff cost is it possible just to allocate that fund specifically to the staff cost budget to send them to a specific thing that the EDC wants wants them to go to I, there, there is currently I, already a line item for staff and council to go to conferences. Right, but but if if the conferences that that budget line if that if that's already spent right it's they've already know what conferences they want to go to and the ones that this committee wants them to go to 
as Walter suggested, something like a franchise one or something that's going to be, you know, trying to bring in some new businesses that might not be on the current staff radar. If it is a staff, if the EDC decides that it's a staff member that should go, could we not allocate that budget and say, this is specifically leaving this line item going to the staff line item for this specific thing? Yes. Good. Okay. We usually don't go through all our budget as a council member. So there's usually budget left over. So for me, I'm not too worried about it. And I'm pretty sure the mayor goes under the county. So he's in a different position again than I am. Um, as far as staff goes, uh, staff would have to answer for themselves on that one. I'm not sure if they utilize all of their budget or not, but I'm pretty sure that there's budget for them to go to conferences that they feel they need to go to. It's more in my mind for if any of any of the members of the committee want to go to a conference or, or that they feel would assist the EDC that we keep this line item in there so that they have that opportunity to go. You'd be surprised, for example, if you go to the franchise, how eye-opening it is as to what is available out there and the types of things you would like to see in the town of Shelburne. And so I, that I, as would, an example. I would say that if, you, if you're going to use the line item, which is I think is a great idea, it's just, um, I guess we'll have discussions at the time whether or not the particular event would be relevant um, for our in our current situation, um, you know, because as you know, Walter, we don't actually have any industrial lands right now that we, yeah, you know, and and I am in constant contact with the federal government with regards to industry development, but it always comes down to land, right, and availability. Yeah, hopefully that'll change in the near future. And one thing to note is that this is a recommendation to council. So council has the authority to um, reduce budgets during the budget discussion process. I'm gonna stop sharing this page now so that we can go back to full screen. Anyone else? Has anything to, to come in? Sure. Okay, so um, we'll move on to scheduling our meeting. Our sorry, goal. sorry, Althea, just one thing. So we'll need a resolution from the committee. Okay, I'll do. That um, supports the proposed 2024 budget items of uh, 4,000 for the EDC breakfast. 800 for the golf tournament, uh, 2,000 for speakers and subject matter experts, and that 1,500 be added to the conference training uh, GL line item. So that's a resolution. Okay. So, uh, okay. okay. Jack, we'll move so, it. So I'll now call in a mover and, and a, second. a seconder. So check and yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So, all in favor? Any opposed? Carries. Good. Okay. So, we'll now move on to scheduling our meeting. So, we're looking to have dates set for the remainder of the year and hopefully 2024. So um, what dates and time? So the last, previously, it was 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. Um, is there a specific date? Do we want to keep it on Fridays? Fridays work fine for these meetings, right? Yeah, Fridays. Yes. Th this time is perfect for me. It works for me. 10 a.m.? Fridays. 10 or 7 do we want to stick it stick at um stay with seven thirty or ten a.m. 
10 I prefer a.m. 10 a.m. Okay. I, I, I like a little earlier, but I can also do 10. It's just that I have a son and getting oh. ready to go to school, pack lunch and all those stuff, all that drama. No, you're, see, you're a much better mom than I am with that. I just, I just kick him out the door. Get dressed, get out. All right. <laughs> okay. And we can keep the state for 2024 as well this time and day, Friday. Yes. Okay. It's going to be monthly, right? Is it month monthly, Jennifer? Yes. Is yes. So just for clarification, you're thinking about the third Friday of the month? Third Friday. Uh, third Fridays, or we could keep it at third Fridays. Okay, yes, third Fridays, um, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay, and we'll move on to the EDC strategic plan. Um, I believe Carol has attached um, these documents to the to the agenda. I, I think I think that's something that we pretty near need a full meeting just on it alone. I think if we try to shove it in quickly today, we won't make it. Okay. So, and that's why to, to um, I just it was really I was just an FYI for your information. Okay. Um, and I just was giving it to you more as homework to review. Um, in the 2024 budget, I have put in funds for uh, a strategic plan session with uh, um, hopefully with a facilitator. So it probably won't be a full strategic plan or more likely be um, a lot, lot, it won't be as full and um, as the previous one that we did. Uh, it's going to be certainly a lot smaller, primarily because it's it's just the cost is it is well over seventy thousand dollars now to to do a full strategic plan. So this will be more of an update. Yeah, it will be more of an update. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. So we'll move on to um, our EDC breakfast. Um, so we're looking to create a subgroup of two or three people um, who will be able to work, I guess, alongside with Carol in um, finding a, booking a speaker and planning the breakfast. So we need at least two or three people, three individuals. Do we have Can a we? do we have a theme? Sorry. So we have Priya. Um, I have a question before I go ahead. Uh, what are the timings of uh, like how how often are we going to meet? Is it just gonna be a phone call or are we going out and whatnot? I have my work schedule. I can I am a little flexible with that. Um, I'm in Shelburne on Monday. Wednesday and Friday. So if it is in those days, I can very well join. So the committee will have, whoever sits on this particular subcommittee will have to make a decision with regards to timelines and, and how often they want to meet. Chuck, okay. you, had a, you had a question as well? I was just wondering if, if, you, if, this, if the committee has already picked a theme for the breakfast. Like what, what do we, what, what do you want to talk about? What subject matter, you know, do we, would be, because then, then it makes it easier to find a speaker. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly talk on the visitor economy, making <laughs> vibrant communities. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, normally uh, the, the events are um, sort of economic based. So they, in the past, all of the events uh, have been sort of like, 
um, here we grow again sort of idea where we talk about the growth of Shelburne in particular um, uh, and the development that's either here or coming. Um, and then we also have a, a over, overview of, of the economy, which is usually done by um, someone who's a professional economist. Yeah, or and or a futurist. Okay, okay, that yeah. makes that makes good sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay, so do we have Priya? Priya. Yes. On I'm the in. subgroup, anyone else? I guess I could. <laughs> I'm myself. <laughs> I I can join it too. And, okay. okay, and then we have Amy. Okay. Um, okay, so I know calling a mover and a seconder. Okay, I can move it. Seconder? Hold. Are all in favor? Any opposed? Okay. All right. So, am I okay to adjourn? 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 Sorry, adjourn the meeting, Jennifer. Um, item number six is new business. Does anyone have? Oh, number six. Oh, new business number six. Doesn't look like there's any. Okay. Okay. I guess we're good to adjourn. All right. Um, um, sorry. Go ahead. Um, this question is to Carol. Carol, is the 2024 uh, full budget approved yet, or is it still work in progress? No, it's it's not approved. It's work in progress at this point. Okay. Um, once it is approved, is it possible for you to get a copy, or is it on the Shelburne website? Yeah, it we usually the 2024 budget once it's approved is is made public uh, on the website. All right. At okay. some point, Thank if you'd you like, what I can do once it has been approved is that I can just send everybody a, a PDF copy of it. It's quite large. Um, what if you're only interested in the economic development section? Then I can pull that out and just send you that. But if you'd like to see the full budget, we can. I can certainly send you that as well. Yeah, I would like to do that. It's it's the like my. It's a field of work that I'm in. I make the budgets for the corporations and whatnot. So I'll be interested in seeing how the city budget looks like for 2024. Okay. And Carol, Thank don't you. add to me, please. I already will get a copy. Um, Chuck, you had your hand up. I did. I'm just. I'm, I'm just. I'm a little slow to slow to catch up here. I so the. So the EDC plan that you currently have expired in 2019. So you we're going to do a refresh. I to Walter's point, Eddie, just a couple of minutes ago, I would behoove us to perhaps um, put on next month's agenda, sort of what this committee would would you know some of the some of the at least the, the 10,000 foot level things that they're thinking of. So that when you go to find your facilitator that's going to do the, the update, there's an opportunity um, for them to know in advance what types of people they might want to get into the room, you know, where do they want to focus their attention and that sort of stuff. So if we have that, if this committee has that kind of uh, uh, ability, I think that that would actually be a pretty good idea. You have to have more discussion on or where we're moving and where we're going with the, with the strategic plan. Um, the information that I provided you, um, what I tried to do is basically just highlight the areas that have, where we're at with them. Yeah. Um, there are some areas in the strategic plan that were done in the past that are strictly planning um, department and not necessarily economic development. Right. Uh, so those are sort of things that we'll have to have further discussions on and, and, and really review so that when we do move forward with our new and updated version, uh, it, it's yeah. really focused on uh, economic development within the town of Shelburne. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think I think you know even if we just start with the SWOT analysis from that from that thing and just say, well, where where are you now? Because if we see that there's some of the same weaknesses and and some of the same threats and the opportunities haven't presented themselves fully, you know, is there are there opportunities for us to to at least try to guide that conversation? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Doing another SWOT analysis is going to be really important. Yeah. And I know that to whoever we decide to work with will hopefully include that in as part of the process. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's not just going to be a single day. I'm hoping it's going to be a series of days um, yeah. so that we can really, really get into the nitty gritty of, of what economic development looks like within the town and, and how we can move it forward. Yeah, and if you get one done for 70 grand, you're getting a deal. I, I know what York's paying. Yeah, I know. It, it, this, it, it when I quoted it 70, 70, 000. <laughs> I know. I quoted 70,000. That yeah. was just a rough estimate based on uh, in, in increasing the cost from the previous one. So right. we wouldn't know until we went out to when we when we started sending out for our RFP. So yeah. I mean, we yeah. yeah. It's uh it can be it's very costly. It can be. This, that's one of those, I usually never recommend putting a budget into an RFP because then they'll always make it right to the budget top. But if you say, I've only got 50 grand, what are you going to get me for 50,000? Even if you only had 25,000, someone's yeah. going to bid on it. Well, this is what, they'll, this they'll is just kind tell of what they can deliver. This is kind of what we've been doing, but we're because it it's most, there's no funding available also. That's the other issue right now is there is no funding available. I, I've been, the last two months I've been waiting and there's nothing. Not for this. If we were doing parks and recreation, or if we were doing, you know, arts and entertainment, or it would be different. But there isn't anything for economic development, strategic plans right now. Well, it seems like clearly people are making the missing the big picture. Sorry, people are missing the big picture. If we attract more businesses, that will boost the economy, and that will in. In effect, it will give money to the city to do all other activities like parks and recreations, et cetera. Yeah. The, um, the problem is, is that post COVID, everyone's talking about um, outdoor activities, recreation, arts and entertainment right now. Um, so it, it's, uh, you know, the Trillium Foundation, it's like they're really focused on those specific areas. It's almost impossible to get any money outside of yeah. this. So. Okay. 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 Can we move along? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, be it resolved that we now adjourn to reconvene at the call of the chair. I'll move it. Seconder. Okay. Amy. Are all in favor? Yep. Any opposed? You're right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Have a great weekend, everyone. Have a good weekend. See you too. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks.